Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. We've reached the 39th Torah portion. The 39th Torah portion, which is known as Chukah. Chukah. Now we spend some time with uh, Kore. It was necessary to spend some time in, um, in Kore. Because Kore, each, each uh, sabbatical um, Torah portion is like a lesson. It's like a, it's an important part of our basic training in, in keeping the commandment, which is to show our love for Yahweh and his son and Yeshua HaMashiach. Now, um, let's continue with this for a moment because we seem to have come into some um, technical difficulty. All right. Are we still on? All right, so let us record. Um, let's continue. We thought we had a little bit of technical difficulty. So this is the the thirty the thirty ninth the thirty ninth uh, sabbatical, which Bamarinya we gave a phrase within the Sabbath house reading the PDF um, file where we called it. Um, Based on the metaf kedus and the gusim gas here, higu tizaz yihino. Now this comes from the revised and hard Bible of the gusim gas of Kedemah. We had a silasi when verse two of Numbers or read is a chulque mitraf hasra zetain egziavi harima musenina ronena indi below tenagracho. And Yahweh, the sustainer, spake to Moses, Musa, and to Aaron, Aaron, saying, "Egziavia yazazo ye higut izaza yihno melakami tun nuurima yelele batin enverima yalete chane batin e gidera yamet ulizen le Israel jocha nigracho." Now, the translation is, this is the ordinance, the King James translation reads, this is the ordinance of the law, which the sustainer Yahweh yod heh wow he hath commanded, saying, speak to the children of Israel, the Geek Israel, the Bani Yisrael, that they bring thee a red heifer, Bamarinya the ke gidir, the ke red gidir, Hefa, without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. Now, in understanding the sabbatical um, portion that we have before us for the 39th, what we call even the 39th degree of our of our basic, if, if one is new to the Sabbath keeping in this way, in the ancient Hebraic way, with uh, the Torah readings and with the feedings and the study of it, especially the reading on the Sabbath and the meditation on this this word from the Torah, the five books of Musa of Moses, from the prophets, as well as the Berit Hadasha or the the New Testament. It gives us a provides us a a spiritually nutritious meal, and this is. This is the basic, when one asks us about discipleship, this uh, sabbatical Torah readings and feedings and the available material at www.lojsociety.org, like the Sabbath House Reading Hour chart, and we're also um, producing other materials that can further um, explicate, explain, as well as answer certain important um, basics in the basics of discipleship and, and, and knowing the scripture as Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMushi, as he even said, Adunenu said, he said, you do err, not knowing 
the scriptures nor the power of God. I think it was the it was the Sadducees or one of the uh, one of the religionists, the type of so-called religious folks. You understand, or so-called churchgoers and and. and different counterfeit forms of Christianity or our lost sheep people, the, the, the black Jewish and the, and the Hebrew, the Beta Israel people. Now, so the scriptures, the scriptures is very, very important, but now we also need a structure, order, and the Sabbath, the sabbatical studies is that basic order. You'll hear us going over this because we need to be reminded of what the first baby steps and basic steps one has to get to understand what is in the the manual what's in the the word because we do not save anyone of ourselves we seek to minister the word to bring one to bring ourselves and to bring others who are willing to come to salvation to the word to to the truth to the way the truth and the life so the 39th sabbatical Torah portion is called in the Hebrew Chukah Chukah Now what does Chukah mean? Chukah or Chukah Is the Strong's uh, Hebrew uh, Concordance and Dictionary Has as the H2708 And they said the meaning substantially Is the same means appointed A custom A manner or ordinance A site or a statute now the precise word Bamarinya we gave we gave a a, a phrase part of the phrase uh, yeah higu tizaz yihna but the exact word the the corresponding word in the Metaf Kedus of Hala Selassie, the Bible of His Majesty in the Royal Amharic is tizaz the word is tizaz and tizaz means a command means command the command of the hug, higu of his law. This is the command of his law, or this is the ordinance in that sense. Now, in the Jewish uh, Humash, in the synagogue Torah that we have before us, when we go to Hukah, Hukat, they have Hukat, it says, uh, the footnote says, the statue of, of the law. It says that uh, Satan, Yitaregame Yehun, and the nations of the world ridicule the paradoxical institution of the Kegidir, the red heifer, according to which its ashes purify the unclean and defile the clean. Therefore, the Torah, or the Orit, employs the term Hukha, a statute whose reason is not disclosed because it wishes to emphasize that this divine law, Melakotawi Hug, must be observed even though it be unfathomable. Now that's what Rashi says. Now Rashi comments saying that its reasons are not disclosed. Now, we're not like the so called Jews or the Hebrews of old. All thanks and praise to God in the name of Jesus Christos, of his Christ, Christ in the kingly character. Because we, through Christ and in Christ, are able to take that veil from off our eyes in the reading of Musa. Because of Christ and his kingly character. So now, going to the foundation from the Torah or the Chumash, and, and what the Jews have as their footnote from Rashi. And now comparing this, where they say that, that Satan... And the nations of the world ridicule the paradoxical institution of the red heifer, of the red heifer. And there's a lot of background and related material that, because of Google and the information um, technology we have, as each um, deck uh, mesmores or disciples' responsibility, personal responsibility, to look up these things, take notes, and take good notes of this. Now, in the Schofield study. Bible or reference Bible that we utilize alongside the under chapter 19 which begins this 39th sabbatical reading and feeding or hukah yahigu tizaz yihidno under this area says the red heifer the footnote area says it's a type of the sacrifice the meswa'it or the meshwa'it of Mashiach or of Christos as the ground 
of the cleansing of the mitmenan or the amanya, the believer, according to the King James Targum, from the defilement contracted in his pilgrim walk, his akahed, his halaka, through this world, an illustration of the method of cleansing. So now with that veil being removed from off our eyes in the reading of Moses through Christ, through Jesus Christos, and through the new birth and the rebirth, we're able to now understand what the Jews say in their Chumash. They call it, they call it um, a statute whose reason is not disclosed to them just in the Old Testament sense. You know what I'm saying? Being blinded or having a veil over their eyes. And you know the New Testament quote in the reference to that particular verse that we point to. Because now we learn that, that what is what was not disclosed to them, but is disclosed to us in Christ's kingly character, as Rastafari Jews or Yehuda, it says a type of the sacrifice of the Messiah. This is the red heifer. And it shows the ground of cleansing of the Amanya or the Mitmanan, the true and faithful one, or according to King James Targum, translation, interpretation, believer, from the defilement contracted, this defilement is contracted even in our pilgrim walk through this world. So this illustration of the method of his cleansing is the first and the key matter in this sabbatical reading and feeding. Now, Orthodox Jews and Hebrews, in their study of Torah, usually assign that each portion has about seven Seven, seven key key elements or seven key parts to each Torah reading. Now, in following that particular example and seeing the um, practicality and the and the truth of that, for example, in this particular Sabbath portion, this is where we give our summary of what is contained in this particular sabbatical 39th portion called Chuka or Yehe. Uh, the first matter, and that we're, we're still in the, the area of numbers or Bemidbar, which is the years of wandering, the years of wandering through the wilderness, the wanderlust phase. That this is the fifth matter, and it's the ordinance of the red heifer. This is what contains this whole chapter here, chapter 19. Then we move to chapter 20. The years of wandering continuing is the sixth matter, which is the death of Miriam. So we have two parts here. We have the red heifer and the death of Miriam, the sister of Moses and Haron. Then it says that there's thirst in the old place of thirst. There's thirst in the old place of thirst. There's the water from the rock and, and Moses' sin. So the major matter here is, is, is the rock. And what happened when that thirst took place in the old place of thirst. So, so far we have three matters. Three of the seven. Let's see if there's, there's seven to this. Because this continues to chapter 21. Um, well, actually chapter, is it 21 or is it 22? It's 22 and um, 22 and 1. So, the next matter in the years of one, in the eighth matter, is the never forgotten sin of Adam. What happened with Adam? Then we have the death of of Haron of Aaron. Then at chapter twenty one we have the march of Israel. This whole chapter concerns the march of Israel. The first part is the victory. The second part is the serpent of brass. That's all concerning the march of Israel. And the third matter is the two victories that we find at the end of this twenty first chapter of Numbers. Now, when we get to 20, chapter 22 of Numbers, we're to read to, in this 39th uh, Torah portion, to 22 and 1. So, when we get to 22 and 1, we find the fourth matter, which introduces Balaamism, or Beliam, introduce Beliam, right, um, or Balaam, and, and, and it's just 22 verse 1, so just one verse, and it's, 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 it's at the introduction. So the next coming Sabbath, you know what I'm saying, the coming Senbet, 
would be the 40th portion or Balak. You understand Balak. Now, why this is important is because in more diligent and more diligent discipleship, when we have more congregational and coming together of study, now we have to be responsible for have show a personal responsibility where we're at. You understand to getting learning what the discipline is and, and applying the principles. You understand? So therefore, we are growing in wisdom and getting to that overstanding or that maturity, which is called scripturally, biblically, that perfection, being, 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 being mature. You understand? And therefore can assume more responsibility in the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, returning to the main portion of this reading and feeding concerning the K. Gidir, since it's a type of the sacrifice or meshwa'it of Christos, we find that there's an order since it's an illustration of the method of his cleansing. So what is this order in connection with the sacrifice of Christos? What is this order? So this is what we're going to study. And those who have the Schofield um, reference Bible, they can get a, a downloadable or free downloadable copy from, from the www.lojsociety.org and can study it. We have a footnote down here which is, explains to us, and this is what we get into within the studies, and this is where we really start to grow and start to see the fulfillment of the Moshia by understanding that shadow or, or the first part of the reveal, the schoolmaster, where it says the, the, the law or Torah is our schoolmaster until Christ come or be formed in us until we are mature. The law is very important as our schoolmaster to bring us to that spiritual maturity or maturation. So the first, the first matter for the disciples, for any disciples that we um, both teach as well as do and practice to, in order to perfect it ourselves, is the Torah portion, the readings and the feedings and the study of it both during the sabbatical time or the senbet time between the two eves or evenings as well as during the week you understand as we have opportunity during the week until the next completion of the week on the seventh on the senbet you understand and then in the community the coming together would be on the ihud or the first day or the sunday so in ancient Ethiopian, the Ethiopic church, they kept two Sabbaths, quote, and quote, or two, you could say, holy days. One was the seventh day, or the Judaic or Hebrew, Beta Israel, Senbet, or the Sabbath of the Jews, as well as Ehud, which was called the Sabbath of the Christians. But there's a very important harmony to that order. So when one say, do we keep um, um, Sunday or Saturday? You understand? It's actually both, but first, first must be the keeping of the sin bed, and then is the coming together of the community after that day of rest. And this is a old and an ancient um, um, Ayud or, or or Hebrew or or Jew. You understand? Even going way back into ancient Tobia and ancient Ethiopia before the 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 Hebrews came out or the Jews came out of Egypt with Moses, with Musa. Now, the K. Gidir. We need to study more on this K. Gidir, and we're going to take a brief pause for the cause. You understand? And we'll continue to understand well, what is this type of sacrifice of Christos about, and, and what is the order, and why is this impl important? You understand? And how essential this is to share with our fellow Hebrews and even Jews. Because this now explains what Rashi did not have an explication from. You understand? Through the light or the illumination of Christ in his kingly character. So stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. Send it. Salam. Shabbat. Shalom. More to come. Yahweh. Shabbat. Shalom. Send it. Salam. We've reached the 39th Torah portion. The 39th Torah portion, which is known as Chukah. 
hookah.